Hallelujah. Sorry, I'm just moving this thing around. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be unto your name, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. All right, y'all. My name is Kathy Brocks, and this is the LUTG Radio Show. Glory to God. You're listening to LUT. You're listening on LUTGRadio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So um, I am so hoping that all can hear me. Hold on. I got a few. There we go. Glory to God. All right. So um, let's get started with some prayer, y'all. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Lord God of Ham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, I beseech thee through the shed blood of your of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, in your inner courts, asking you to open up your understanding of your word unto me that I may speak as you speak for the purpose of freeing those bound by sin. Remove the tar from the hearts of the church, Father God. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, strengthen me to speak from your offices, your truth, that your creation that your creation's ears may be restored, open to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Bring about in me your character of obedience, humility, power, love, and a sound mind, sound body for which you gave Jesus. And Jesus said it would be given unto us all that he has. And he has all that you have. Restore. Lord God, Jesus, dwell in me. Put your mighty words upon my lips. That I may honor you in worship. Let your words be as coal from the earth of heaven, from the altar of heaven. Glory to God. For the name of Jesus is like coal to our lips. For the body of Christ goes to and fro about the earth, being saved in the name of Jesus and still committing wrong acts. We are in this earth, but we are not of it. Jesus came to save it and he left us to finish the work. Sovereign Lord, loving God, mighty God, my Savior, Prince of Peace, Jesus, Crown King, Lord God, Jehovah, our provider, my ever-present Lord, Lord God of victory, strength, and solace. Oh, how I love thee, Lord. I thank you for your, for good health. For as you are, so are we. I thank you, Lord God, for healthy praise. For the desire to praise and to worship you, Lord God. Lord God, bless me with the strength of the tithe. Bless those within the sound of my voice with the belief in you, Lord Jesus. And in the obedience of the tithe, pour out your abundant tithe anointing on the tithers. With the blessing of harvesting from the seeds and the tithes and the offerings and the alms sowed. I thank you, Lord God, that we give in good cheer. In 
income has been lessened, but the heart of the tithe, but the heart for tithing has remained and increased. Oh Lord God, open up the windows of blessings from heaven, oh Lord God, and pour out your tithe, your fruit offering, your full offering unto us, Lord God, for we have sold. Pull out the pour out your fruit, O oh Lord God. For in the windows of heaven there is no less. There is full grown blessings. For you provided the seed already. We thank you, Lord God. For from the fruit comes the seed. We thank you, Lord God, for the harvest fruit. Send us increases, businesses, new ideas, monies, currencies. I thank you, O oh Lord God, for wiping out the debt of the tither. Thank you, Lord God, for opening up the windows of blessings from heaven and then pouring it on the tither. Lord, restore, bring Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for pouring out, open up the windows from heaven to be upon the households of the tither to the abundant overflow. Rebuke the devourer for the sakes of the tither, the workers of the kingdom of God, by whose name name we are grafted by son and our savior jesus christ heal the mortal bodies of the tither lord god heal the unsaved as a as a testimony of your goodness your mercy your grace to the saving of their souls in the name of jesus amen Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. All right. So today's message uh, is in regards to going as far as your leader can go. And so we should know that our leader is the Holy Spirit. You can only go as far as your leader can go. God made the fivefold ministry the earthly head of the church man just like well man is the head of the church just like he made adam a leader of all man earth and everything in it we can only go as far as the leadership will take us in acts 27 9 through 10, it says, Now when much time was spent, and when sailing was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them and said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be with hurt and much damage, not only of the landing and the ship, but also of our lives. Now later on in this passage, God rebukes the danger rebukes the devourer because paul had an appointment with caesar and so because of paul because of a man a man that believed in jesus all their lives were spared they lost their income they lost their ship was which was the source of their income they lost their bounty which was the, you know the harvest that they had reaped but they kept their lives now, so you can lose your harvest when you disobey God. They lost their harvest. Second Timothy 13, 15 through 17 says, And that from the child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scriptures given by inspiration of God, 
and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. That is hearing what the Spirit of the Lord has to say, church. A man cannot go beyond his own knowledge without the help of the Lord. Man is made to lead and to submit so that he or she, man, may learn and grow. You ever heard the saying, when you know better, you do better? Because if you don't know how to fix a car and you just get on up in there and start getting stuff apart, it ain't going to work. It may not start back up. For example, back in the day, I had my little Ford. It was a, I forget which kind of Ford it was. It was a 91 Ford or something, hatchback. And uh, I think it might have been an Aspire or something. Anyway, the uh, man across the alley who was a mechanic thought it would funny be funny if you would tell me to go ahead and cut the um, the serpentine belt. Well, without a serpentine belt, the motor won't make the other parts run and you can't get power like a generator provides power to to light up a house. So does that that belt provides allows when you turn the key, it allows the motor to turn over and the pistons to move the alternator and 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 the uh, starter and things and the alternator will charge the battery and the battery will charge the alternator and that sends power to the starter and and before the starter goes it actually has to go to the to unit on the wall the igniter of all the power and without that belt you know you get power nothing will turn and so he thought it funny to tell me who didn't know anything about that Go ahead and cut it because I was doing so well with everything else. They wanted to slow me down. They didn't want me to gain the knowledge that they had. You can only go as far as your instructor will guide you and will lead you. And so he led me to a ditch and I ended up giving up my vehicle for little or nothing. And the person that came to help me, to deliver the car from the mechanic, which refused to fix it. He fixed it, but then he didn't, I found out later by, by the Lord that he fixed it, but, but then he wouldn't allow, he, he didn't tell me that he fixed it. He said, we're still broken. And I believed him and I felt the Lord. And he said, well, I'm gonna let you have this car, but you can't drive it. Be, you gonna give it to the junkyard, right? Cause he wanted me to pay for services, but I was like, well, why would I pay for services? And you said it's not fixed. And so he set it up so that I guess one of his friends would take this car off my hands whom he had fixed. And so that way they got the car without actually paying me for the vehicle. You see what I'm saying? And so I could only go as far as the wisdom of these mechanics because I believed them. And my disobedience was I should have turned over the crank in the car. I should have cranked the car, but I was too ashamed that I didn't know enough about the vehicle. And he had me to give my word that I would not take the vehicle, that I would not drive the vehicle because it didn't run. And that I would not try and, and that basically I would not, uh, not pay him. You, you see what I'm saying? Now, had he told me the vehicle was fixed, I'd have found a way to pay him. But he told me the vehicle wasn't fixed. So I said, I'm going to give it to the junkyard. And so he made me give my word. And the problem is, when I give my word, that's it. I'm going to keep. And I was too ashamed. I heard God say, turn it, turn it over. Turn the key over. Turn the key over. But I was too ashamed of my word. When God is, even though you give your word and God is telling you to do a thing, listen to the Lord. Because I ended up getting a car note for $300 a month, which was too much for me. Ended up losing the car. You see what I'm saying? 
God would have saved me from all that had I listened to him, even though vipers were in my way. He wanted me to have sex with him in order for him to do right by something that he could have gotten paid for. See, had he fixed the car, I couldn't, I could have, you know, finished the jobs that I had. I could have paid him. I'd have found a way to pay him. But he wanted sex as payment. And I refused. I refused. Never give up your godly anointing for a meal ticket. Been a meal ticket for me. Just like Esau gave up his birthright to Jacob. Sometimes the enemy, oftentimes, all the time, the enemy is always asking you to give up your anointing from God and give it to him. Don't do it. Don't do it. I said no to him and I was on a bus and walking and riding my bike for a long time. But I kept my dignity. I kept my peace. Because in that moment, he was turning me into a prostitute. And if you prostitute yourself once, not only would the man go around and tell people what you've done, but those spirits that are there enticing him to do these things will go and tell and speak in the ears of many men and say, make her have sex with you to get anything that she wants. They will turn you into a prostitute, which is not the identity of Christ. Christ called you a godly woman, a blessed woman. He called you a wife. And a wife is a wife of one man, not a bed for many men. Your vagina is your bed, your floor. It only belongs to one man. Amen. And so you can only go as far as the leadership around you. And so you got to be careful what men you allow around you. And gentlemen, be careful of what women you allow allow around you because you are natural coverers. And some women will have you to cover them to your death. Some women will have you to cover them to your death. There was a woman that I saw on social media. And she was dressed in scantily attire and she had on an outfit with her butt cheeks out. And in high heels and she looked like a bunny. So she could have been working someplace. But here's the problem. Some dude started hitting on her and he wanted a taste. So his mind is your booty cheeks are out. That means it's good for the touching and the slapping. And you act like you want to give it up because you got it all exposed. And she's like, no. And another woman that was fully clothed came up and said, okay, well, she's with him. We know it is now just, just back off. And neither one of them heeded, heeded wisdom. And they broke out into a fight. Now, what could she have done? Believe God for a job where she ain't got to come out put all her butt cheeks out. Believe God that she could go out if she wasn't working, that she could go out with her boyfriend without having her private parts exposed. God will provide. A man ain't working for it and you just showing it out freely, you're not just showing it to him, you're showing it to all the men that are around him. So you're not really covering yourself for him don't give away what belongs to your husband you can go you can only go as far as the leadership over you so should her parents have told and trained her up in the way to go yes did she probably did we don't know whether or not they trained her or not because oftentimes when we are of age we like to make our own decisions and even though our parents may have said cover up child Cover up. That is your God. That is your husband's parts. Cover up. We're probably thinking, well, they won't think he no man will think I'm sexy if everything is covered. 
a godly man will find you sexy when he knows that he has to cover you and to bless you in order to get you to uncover before him in holy matrimony. Adam had God. A man can only go, a man, like I said, God, a man cannot go beyond his own knowledge without the help of the Lord. Man is made to lead and to submit so that he may learn and grow. You know what you are taught. So who is inspiring you? Who is inspiring your thought processes? Adam had God to obey like a parent, but not as a leader. I know some of y'all are mad at that, right? You probably knew where I was going. The father was not his leader. Jesus was made to lead man, not the father. Jesus was made to lead man into salvation. Jesus was made to lead man into salvation by paying the price for our sins. Don't get mad at me. In John 3, 16 and 17, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. That the world through him might be saved. Jesus came to pay the price for us and to show us how to walk it out. And Jesus's ministry, hold on, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Devil, get out. Jesus came to walk out salvation for us and to show us how to do it. Show us how to say no to the devil. Jesus was tempted 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness by the devil. And he still came out smelling like roses. Because he obeyed. He wouldn't give up the father. He wouldn't give up the ghost without God's, without following the leadership of the Lord, without, I should say, without following the express commands of God. See, Jesus and the father are one. The father, he gets his instructions from the father and from the, and the Holy Spirit. His mind is connected with the father. But when Adam and Eve sin, hold on a second, because I ain't wrong, y'all. I'm, I'm getting to it. John 16 and 13. Um, well, actually, let's go to uh, Acts 2, 1 through 4. It says, when the, the day of the Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's the Holy Spirit. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. It is the Holy Spirit that leads and guides us, and he gets his directions from the Father. Absolutely. He gets his directions from the Father. But he is the one that is leading us in the earth to make right choices the father is not in the earth to lead us to make right choices he in heaven overseeing all of heaven the father provided life his breath that's in genesis 2 and 7 it says and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and of the breath and, and and breathe into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. A soul is a mind, will, emotions, imaginations, and conscience. And Satan jacked up the part of the soul that Satan jacked up was the emotions. And when you jack up one part, you have jacked up the entire part. God gives us protection, his Holy Spirit, his name, his angels. He gives us provision, salvation through Jesus. He gives us a home, heaven. 
He gives us wisdom, the Holy Spirit, his workers, and his angels carry his message of understanding his messages to us. You'll find that in 1 Samuel 19, and, uh, 1 Samuel uh, 19, verses 19 through 21. And that right there says, and it was told, and it was told Saul saying, behold, David is at Naoth in Ramah. And Saul sent messengers to, to take David. And when they saw the company of the prophets prophesying and Samuel standing as appointed over them, the spirit of God was upon messengers of Saul and they also prophesied. And then when it was told, uh, Saul, he he sent other messengers and they prophesied likewise. And Saul sent messengers again the third time and they prophesied also. God was with them. God will send messengers to get you on the right track to make sure that you are doing justly. God will send messengers. God will send messengers. God will send messengers. Sin cannot stand before the Father. It is immediate. It is immediate rebuke without the blood of the Lamb. Without Jesus, we cannot stand before the Father on our own. We cannot. In the moment, that God knew man's sin, man was not covered in the skin. Man was not covered in skin. He was covered in sin. He still had his body of glory. He still had the image of God, but he no longer had the obedience. He no longer had that image of Christ, that obedience. I hope I'm saying it's right. He wasn't covered in skin. He had the glory of God. But his his eyes are the windows to his soul and they were open. You find that in Genesis 3 and 5. The eyes of man was deceived and clouded with emotions of forsaking. You're like, what? Man, I hope y'all getting this. Going over to Genesis chapter three, verse five, it says, for God doth know that in a day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Satan wanted them to know sin because without them knowing sin, he would have no access to them. Without them knowing sin, he would have no access to them. And access to them meant that he could once again be in power over everything like he was before. He wanted to be in charge. He wanted to have a seat in heaven. And he knew the only way he could get it was through man. He needed man to sin, to be like him. He needed man to have the identity as him, sin, a sinful identity. The eyes are the windows to the soul, the mind, the, the mind, the will, emotions, imagination, and consciousness. The eyes of man were deceived by his emotions of forsaken. To tell man God would hold back knowledge is saying God's love is not full for them, for man. The deception is the same as Lucifer when he fell. He thought it good to start a war in the heavens to overthrow God because God was giving man a position of dominion over all things God created. Lucifer was jealous, yo. Jealousy is a spirit of sin. Jealousy is a spirit of sin. And Lucifer was jealous. He was absolutely jealous. He was beside himself. In Genesis 1, 26 to 31, it says, 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creep upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them. And God blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. Hold on. I'm hearing. Satan had to give them to sin before they had children. Satan had to get them to sin before they had an offspring. Because imagine this. Had they had the offspring first. The offspring would have been head over the parents. Remember back in Genesis when Jacob, the younger one, became the head over the older one, the firstborn, his brother, Esau, because Esau sold his birthright, not fully understanding his birthright. And so in the moment that that happened, fear and jealousy and greed and dishonor came over Esau's mother, Jacob's mother, because she feared that her elder son would not treat her as well and allow her to take to take authority over all that was her husband's. Whereas Esau, the one she could control, will allow her to have authority over all that was her husband. <laughs> she lost two sons that day. Satan had to get them to sin first. Jacob, in blessing his children, put the lesser, I'm sorry, not the lesser, the younger over the older one. The older ones were evil in all their ways, but the younger one who had learned because of all the evil that his sons had committed, you better know that he taught his younger ones in the way to go and they obeyed him. He put Judah over all of them. Joseph, who was sold and who also was a younger one, who was sold by his older brothers became head not only over his brothers, but over his father in another nation that was not even theirs. And he became head over all the heathens, those that were under the Pharisee, the, under Pharaoh. He needed Adam's seed to be tarnished before they had children, Otherwise, that seed would have become a head and been sin free. And God, we would have had to wait for the coming of Jesus. The sacrifice would have been for the firstborn only. Can you imagine? Jesus would not have had this whole world. So he allowed Satan to come and to deceive them before their offspring because Jesus was anointed to come into the world to save the whole world. He had already volunteered. He knew that man would sin. And God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed to you. It shall be for meat. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. Wherein there is life glory to God I have given every green herb for me and it was so and God 
saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good and evening and morning were the sixth day he had already given him absolutely everything lord tell me what you were trying to say wherein there is life bird flu he had given us dominion over every fowl of the air bird flu covid 19 covid 20 whatever you have authority over that you can only go as far as your teacher as far as your prophet guess who's your prophet jesus guess who he sent the holy spirit which is the mind of god had to save us to lead us into salvation to be forgiven so that we could not so that we could wear the coat of his blood when we stand before the father instead of wearing this sinful skin so when the father looks at us he looks at our eyes and if our eyes do not bear the blood of Jesus, if our eyes, which is the windows to our soul, if our soul does not bear the blood of Jesus, we are a stench to his nose. And he will, what do we do with a stench? We rebuke a stench. But with Jesus, we have everlasting life. We have salvation. We have everlasting life. We have salvation through Christ Jesus. The Lord gives us life. You have the right to rebuke coronavirus. You have the right to rebuke coronavirus. In Genesis 3, 6 and 7, it says, And the women saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and did eat. Read it like this. Okay, wait. And the, eye, and the, and the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Read it like this. And COVID was pronounced and pressed upon the people. And they did believe and receive the sickness from the devil. See, in order to receive a sickness, you got to believe it. You got to have spoken one word or two into your heart for that thing to manifest or somebody spoke something over you oh my child might get that too my child gonna get that don't don't say that don't proclaim your child to be sick proclaim to be healthy even if it sounds crazy you say my child will never be sick a day in their life proclaim it proclaim the truth of god any disease or virus that touches my child dies instantly my child shall live and not die my child shall be the head and not the tail above and not beneath going forward and not backwards my god my child is a blessed and a sign of god my child shall fulfill every hope that god wrote in their book in heaven i shall fulfill every hope that god wrote in my book i shall live and not die God gave me and my family 120 years each. I have the right to live. God will bring me home when he's ready for me to come home. But until then, I will present the gospel. I will be a living source of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will be an example of the love of God. I will follow after Jesus all the days of my life. I am blessed and highly favored. Bless yourself. You can only go as far as your leadership. Jesus leads us to salvation. He, he paid the price for salvation and told us how to walk it out. The Holy Spirit was sent by Jesus in the earth to lead us to the word of God, Jesus, which provided the salvation for us. You wonder why sometimes you, you want to go to church, but you feel like something is holding you back. But suddenly when somebody pray for you, the Holy Spirit is knocking that thing off of you so you can go to church. 
so you can hear the gospel, so you can hear the word. That's the Holy Spirit moving on your behalf. That's the word of God rising up in you. The Holy Spirit knocks, gives you, breaks you free, lets that word rise up on the inside of you so that you can say, yes, Lord, I believe. I know it sounds like I'm going on a circular motion, like like I'm not telling you, I'm, I'm trying to explain some difficult things to you. But you know in your heart that I'm telling you the truth. It's happened to me. I wanted to go to church and I wanted to get saved. I was told no. Why? Because there were disobedient men at the church raping children. There were disobedient men at the church cheating on their wives. There were disobedient women at the church lying and gossiping. There were disobedient people doing disobedient things. Their mouth said, yes, 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 Jesus. But their heart was black. And they gave in to all the hurt and the pain that they had experienced in their lives. And they made it impossible for those that wanted to get saved to get saved because their parents had an ear to hear what the spirit of the Lord was saying. And some of them were just customers of their parents. And so they thought, well, why would I send my child there? And that's a drug addict. That's my customer. Oh, hold on. Home. He a customer. I'm, a, I'm the pimp of one of the women he sleeps with every Sunday night before he goes home to dinner. Hold on. What up? Why would anybody send somebody to your church when you live in a hellish life? I don't care how big your church gets. God will reveal what is hidden. And it's not your church. It's his church. He entrusted you with it for a moment, for a season. It ain't forever. You got to do right in all your ways and everything you do. You got to make sure it lines up with the Lord, lines up with the word of God. Because honestly, what you're doing it for. Don't try and take glory from God. When I present the gospel of Jesus Christ, I print it. I present it for the glory of God. I ain't getting no glory out of this. Y'all like, oh, well, she trying to get sponsors. She trying to get money. No, money comes from God. I asked him to bless you so that you can get the blessing from him when you bless me. And if you remember, I asked you to pay your tithes and all your bills, put some money where it's savings, put some money in your pocket, put some money so you can go out with your friends and your family and then give to me of the overflow that God has given to you. I, don't, I ain't trying to get you tied up. I'm trying to get you saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God said not his son unto the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you want to. Repeat this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I confess my sins before you this day. I give up my past life with Satan and close every door to all Satan's devices. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. Thank you for saving me and for bringing me back to where I once was. From this day forward, Lord Jesus, I will be sensitive to how you feel. I won't hurt you. I will obey you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to present me to Jehovah in your name. Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart. I, be I confess with my mouth that you rose from the dead, that I am saved and receive you today wholeheartedly, 100%. Make me a light every place. And from this day forward, I will leave this place and share you with everyone I meet and everyone I know. It's commitment, Jesus. I will get this world for you. I pray this prayer to the Father in the name of Jesus. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus with evidence of speaking in tongues and edifying of uh, and interpreting tongues for the edifying of the body of Christ Jesus by the will of Jehovah God. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. You just got saved. Read your Bible. Start off with the book of John chapter one. Don't miss. And um. Read the Old Testament and the New Testament, at least two chapters every day. 
You're listening to LUTG Radio's WKKP Digital Broadcasting. My name is Kathy Brox, and um, please become a sponsor of LUTG Radio. You can do that on LUTGradio.com. That's LUTGradio.com, WKKP Digital Broadcasting, and share the link, uh, share the podcast, share the radio station, LUTGradio.com. All right. You can receive healing yourself. Speak to your body. Rebuke the disease, the virus, or whatever, and say, I receive my healing. Um, also, want you to read Psalms 30 and Psalms 103. Psalms 30 and Psalms 103. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. We I'm up out of here. The Holy Spirit is with you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Jesus loves you, beloved, and so do I. See ya. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.